Hi, and welcome to day four of the world's biggest aviation event. It is, of course, Loop TV here at Oscos 2010. You know, we know who's the important one. Now, so far, we've seen new aircraft, new manufacturers, new products, new designs, and some pretty exciting aviation shows as well. And we've got more saved today, as you'd expect. Now, in this show, we've got a very interesting interview with a man who knows more about diesel aircraft engines than probably anybody else, Luc Pellon from the French manufacturer SMA. He talks about the SR305V, the updated engine, and some very, very wider matters that relate to all pilots and all forms of fuel. Now, after that, we've got some fantastic display flying to show you from Chuck Aaron, the man whose name comes first in most display organizers' phone books. He is, of course, in his Red Bull helicopter doing things that will probably make you think, eh, OK, I don't want to be in there. Good luck to him. And after that, we've got a whole bunch of your viewers' questions. Anyway, let's get on with some news. Our first news today is from Lancer, who told us an update on their program with the IE2 Lycoming engine. This is the next generation Super Fadex system. They're going to be the first people to vend that in their evolution design. Also, they got changes of boardrooms. Some minority shareholders, the Wollstone Homes are now majority shareholders, and Joe Bartels has moved slightly position there, but basically means more money for the company, which is good news for them. Now, some news from just over my shoulder. We get a lot of queries about prescription sunglasses for pilots. They're pretty difficult to get. Vidalo, really well known amongst aerobatic pilots, are going to start making prescription sunglasses as well. Hurrah for those with four eyes. And of course, even on the fourth day of the show, we've got tons of new aircraft news coming as well. This from Privateer Industries, who claim to be making the first new amphibian design for some 60 years. I'm sure some other people are making claims quite similar to that too. But anyway, never mind. It looks really nice. Very Tracy Island, we think. So, on with the medal. First of all, DC travels over to the Sonic stand to have a look at their all new One X, the one with the folding wings. So, Mark, could you tell us about the new aircraft, the Sonic's One X? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is the One X airframe. It's a single place aircraft. Um, we've seen a tremendous amount of interest in single place airplanes uh, in the last four or five years, particularly since the Thatcher CX 4 came out. In the new economy, everyone wants to save a little money, and obviously, a smaller airplane is less expensive, and we get more performance on the same size engine and we're flying faster with for less money. Uh, the One X is a unique design in that it has a folding wing and uh, it'll look like a Corsair when the wings are folded. So we can trailer it and it's short enough that we can get it into a standard height garage door. It's just under seven feet tall. It's gonna be aerobatic, just like the Sonics, YX, and Xenos. The engine will be our Aero V uh, 80 horsepower VW conversion. So is it gonna be a kit or ready-made aircraft? It will be a kit only. Okay. What's the, the rough price of the aircraft gonna be? We don't have an exact kit price yet because we're not done doing the prototype, but uh, the Sonics kit base price is 14000 We expect this to obviously be less money because it's a smaller airplane requiring less materials. Can you show us around here? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we'll start with the wing fold mechanism. If you look here, yeah. uh, we have a straight center section of the wing, and then we start the dihedral at the wing fold. Uh, a couple of features I'm going to point out here. This is an indicator for the wing fold mechanism. So I'm going to have you do, if you wouldn't mind just kind of crouching down here, Dave. Yep. Um, there is a pin uh, right here that you're going to want to slide to the right with your right hand. And then with your left hand, grab the big handle and pull it towards you. And that's all there is to it. Wow. Now, if you come out here, you can just gently lift the wing up. Wow. And fold it all the way back. Now, once this prototype is completed, we will have brackets that you can put into the rear spar and the main spar pin locations so it'll stabilize the wing for transport. But other than that, that that's all there is to it. So we'll bring it back down. Yep. And we'll just kind of let it clunk into place a little bit, like that. And what you're going to do is you're going to slide that same locking pin over to the right and then push the big handle towards the tail with your other hand. Can we have a look inside the cockpit? Now? Absolutely. Well, it's actually pretty big, isn't it? It is. It's bigger than the Sonics cockpit. We have a 25 inches of shoulder room on the inside. It's a 27 inch wide fuselage. Um, it's a rather supine position. You're laying back quite a bit, so we can get very tall people into it and lots of leg room, and it'll ease the aerobatic load with a more supine position when you're doing aerobatics. And will it have a, an enclosed cockpit? Or? It will. This airplane doesn't yet have a canopy, but it'll be a canopy very similar to what we have on the rest of our airplanes, uh, a bubble canopy that'll hinge on the right side of the airplane. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Yep. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Oh. Look, there he 
is. God, I've been looking for yeah. him everywhere. Wake up, Rich. Come Sir? on. Time to answer viewers' questions. Oh, questions. Sorry, Bacon. What's the first one then? Pat. Ooh. Pat wants to know why the dragonfly hasn't flown. The dragonfly that we saw on Tuesday can't fly because the Swiss pilot who is going to give the display hasn't got 15 hours of display time in the US, which the FAA insists on. End. Another one. Well, Alex Thompson has written in and asked, usually by this point in the year we've seen something big and new from Garmin. What have they got this year? I don't know. How to find out, Dave? That's a very astute question. I went over to Garmin to find out what they've got. Well, Garmin uh, here at Oshkosh is announcing Envelope Stability and Protection, or ESP as we call it, um, which basically allows select G3000 and G1000 aircraft to basically, when they're hand flying the aircraft, ESP is working in the background to, uh, to keep the pilot in a uh, safe operating environment. So if the pilot perhaps were to become incapacitated or not paying attention as closely as they should, the, uh, the Envelope Stability Protection will keep the uh, aircraft in a, in a good flight profile, and as they potentially get beyond 45 degrees of bank, it'll gently nudge them back to a, uh, a level flight situation. Same thing on pitch. We've had a question from Ian, no surname, wants to know what happened to the Martin jetpack that made such a fuss two years ago. Over to you, Rich. It's 2008, they were the star of the show. They were here last year in a much diminished capacity. This year they're not here at all. However, they have recently had $12 million worth of investment funding. There's rumours that they've done a deal to sell 100 jet packs, perhaps to a military organisation, and they're working on a fly-by-wire system that makes that damn slightly easier to fly. Bill Dewey wants to know how MGL avionics are doing with their tie-up with Jepson on their ethos systems. Well, it's funny you should say that, because I've just come out of the Jepson press conference, and they've just said that they're going to supply data for the first time to the manufacturers of avionics for home-built aircraft, such as MGL, Advanced, Garmin, of course, and Dinon Avionics, the big one. So, very soon, they'll have it. Well, next up, we've got a question from Harry Hopkins, who asks, what is on Dick Van Grunsman's drawing board at Vans? Well, Harry, we recognise your name. You probably know better than us. However, it'd be better to ask Dick himself as to what's going on at Vans. So, what Dick, what's on your drawing board at the moment? Well, you know I can't answer that. Seriously. Uh, as you might imagine, we're always working on something in order to progress and stay in business you have to. Let's just say it would follow our basic design and marketing philosophy. Matt Driscoll wants to know what's happening with the Terrafugia as he's thinking of laying a deposit down. Well he should have been watching Monday's show where we talked to Carl Dietrich, the boss of Terrafugia, and he unveiled the next generation Terrafugia. See Monday's show. Jim Rankin was at Oshkosh last year and he wants to know what's happening with the Carter Copter. Any news on it this year? Of course, Carter is one of the firms like Mars that made a bit of an unusual splash last year. No sign of them this year, however, they have recently signed a 40-year licensing agreement with a Textron subsidiary and got some $4 million worth of funding from a uh, development corporation at Wichita. So they're ploughing on, they're just not here this year. Now, I think we've got time for just one more, DC. And another question from Helen Rowlands Beers. I kind of know that name. She wants to know what it's like to fly in the Goodyear blimp. Well, Helen, you'll just have to wait till tomorrow. Now on that note of flying round, we've got some fantastic footage of Chuck Aaron in his amazing Red Bull flying helicopter extravaganza. As it's say in Austria, get to the chopper! Eh? We're even putting helipads on top of the aircraft. Anyway, thanks for that, Chuck, and there's somewhere for you to land later on if need be. 
Now, one of the burning questions at the minute in aviation is, of course, Avgas, potential ban, and diesel. Why aren't more people using it? It's more economical and it's more uh, plentiful in various parts of the world. Well, one man knows a lot about both those subjects. It's Luke Pellon, the boss of SMA Engines, who have a new model to show us here and a lot to talk about. Now, Luke, you've got here the SR305E, your new upgraded engine. Firstly, tell us about the E. I know you'd like to talk about it. Uh, e was at the beginning for a different story. We said it was for announced. But I say it's mainly encouraging for economy, ecology. It's mainly something which should be extensive. So we consider that with this engine, we are greener than any other engine that you can find on the field. And then it could be a more ad adequate uh, engine. So we go a very good performance, high speed. We go high altitude. We keep the performance up to like a turbocharged gasoline engine. So we are more in the world of the, the nice engine that everybody is looking for with a turbocharger on the gasoline engine than we are with the uh, old diesel engine. We have made a lot of things just to reduce the workload of the pilot and increase his safety. Current model, the 305E is 230 horsepower. I believe you're working on a six cylinder engine which would have more. Will there be a 180 horsepower engine, a really, really common model? For us, we made a strategy today that uh, we're not going to be making engines under the 230 or 200 horsepower. The technology that we have developed is better for 250 up to 600 horsepower, I should say. We have started to work on the six cylinders, so we are going to be over 350 horsepower. But to finalize the uh, investment, we need to get the launch customer, and we're working on that today. What's their response been to the 305E? Uh, you, you know, the pilots, uh, since many years, they come and see us, and they're very impressed by the work which has been done. The only thing they are disturbed by the message that they got from the OD association. Um, what is really the future with Afghans? But I, you know, I think that we have to be careful too, because if the pressure we do today with the FGAS, uh, doing that for the OEM of the aircraft, the people are going to say, you know, if the FGAS is going to disappear, I'm not going to buy a new aircraft today, I have to wait. Do you think that the clamor over the potential replacement of Avgas is really obscuring the bigger picture? I'm convinced of that. I think that we are going to burn time and money, and, and people are going to be frustrated because they didn't get the result they were expecting. I think we have to uh, make a break and uh, put the target before we put the solutions. So thank you very much. Thanks to you. Thanks, Luke. Now, there will be an extended version of that interview here on Luke TV, so of course check the links way over here as you're used to doing. Well, that's it for day four. Join us back from day five tomorrow. Don't forget, of course, if you have some questions, it's TV at Luke.Aero. And if you haven't seen the first parts of the week, why? Day one, day two, day three, get clicking.